members of CMTV, you are highly welcome to another edition of Pivotal Issues. We want to apologize for the late start. You know, man makes machine, but machine tends to disappoint man, but we thank God there is God. We are on air, and we thank you so very much for being there. Not to waste time for today's program, dear viewers, we have a few topics that we are going to discuss on. And uh, there are some gentlemen who are going to analyze on those topics, including you out there. And uh, first of all, I want to tell us that the first topic is going to be on the fall of a journalist of CMTV, Wazizi Samuel. Samuel Wazizi, we all know, died uh, some few days ago or sometime in August, but it was just announced a few days ago. So. The court session, the last court session of Samuel Wazizi is supposed to be on the 9th of June, which is tomorrow. And so we are looking at it. Is it going to be justice in the court of justice or injustice in the court of justice after the death of Samuel Wazizi has been announced? Secondly, we are going to discuss on the special status that was announced for Southwest and Northwest region. How special is the special status? given that so many people are still like seeing what the government announced as special status. Then lastly, we are going to discuss on uh, the second phase of recruitment that, uh, you know, some time ago, the President of the Republic, President Paul Bia, decided that about 2,000 lecturers will be employed in the state universities. And so the second phase of recruitment is ongoing. So we are going to dis also discuss on that. Not to waste our time and your time also, I want to introduce, firstly, we have uh, Mr. Njomo Siri of uh, the Cameroon Renaissance Movement. Thank you so very much for coming. Thanks for having me, uh, Mr. Mabo, telling me great, and my co-panelists, Dr. Busienes, and the management of CMT. Thank you so very much. Uh, also, we have uh, Dr. Busi Enes from the Uni University of Boya. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwambo Williams, for inviting me. I think that we are touching minds and we are touching Cameroon because we want a better Cameroon. I'm happy to be here again with my consistent militant of the CRM party to discuss on issues that affects Cameroon. I'm also grateful for the team, the team behind the screen, the behind the camera for their great work they are doing to see that CMTV TV grows from higher height. And I want to end by saying that uh, Mr. Williams, we are talking of COVID-19 and you can see that uh, Boya municipality is highly dirty. Moving in Boya today, you will see lumps of dirt in the neighborhood and on the streets to tell you that we need to improve on our hygienic condition. I'm calling on the council to do something about this because we are fighting against COVID-19 that is very dreadful and we feel that our environment must, must be clean because we recently celebrated the Environment Day and I think that hurt is worth and it's high time the Boya Council and the mayor, they should take responsibility to see that uh, and his outcome to see that uh, the road junctions, all the garbages are uh, taken out of it for us to fight against COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Modretto. Yes, yeah, you just talked of COVID-19 and vis-a-vis -vis 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 the school year yes. that is ongoing. You as a facilitator or a lecturer in the University of Boya, how can you assess the one week you have been in school? The one week we have been in school has been very, very imperative. I want to salute uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Boya, Professor, Mori, uh, Professor uh, Manga, for a great work done. I want to say that Professor Ngomo has, Horace Manga has done a great job because he's the administrator, he's the engine of the university, and he has been moving. Since school started, uh, Professor Horace Manga has been moving from class to class to monitor lecturers in their classes. And in all entrances in the university, you can see hand sanitizers, you can see water, you can see even test, uh, the security doing that, testing students and uh, workers entering into the campus with the test kits to test the temperature of uh, students and workers. And in all amphitheaters, you will see, uh, you will see uh, savon and washing basins to clean yourself.
in your hands and every person puts on uh, a, a face mask and we can also see the issue of social distance because i was teaching the other day the vice chancellor even entered my class to monitor the issue of social distance which he reiterated on it and i had to position my students again for the issue of physical and social distance to tell you that uh, the vice chancellor of the university is doing a great job and i want to also say that uh, if you look at this issue of covid 19 the university of boya you will discover that each establishment is very responsible for for the hygienic condition to see that uh, students don't come to the offices without putting their face marks because it is our individual responsibility it is a collective university uh, responsibility sorry and i want to also emphasize the fact that students are willing to learn face to face we could see the zeal and the enthusiasm of students to learn and we have to put them in class shift but we have to put them in class in shifts to see them learn you teach some of them and then you send them out to sh to, to teach the others for for security reasons for population reasons in the classroom so the study intense uh, the study intense to tell us that uh, the vice chancellor professor horace manga is doing a great job and i think that's a good administrator their view was great assessment there so send your children to school when it is required uh, let me come back to you uh mr politician jomo siri um you know <laughs> some of your colleagues were declared dead by the uh, social media you know the mayor of uh, of tico <laughs> how did you see that after he came back on air well uh, sometimes politicians will use that trick to make their name also come up. So knowing that uh, the Tico municipality is uh, headed by uh, the CPDM administration, I don't want to comment, give them cheap popularity. They could as well use that trick to, to top the, the headlines of the news. Also our condolences to the Bar Association. We hear they are also bereaved. And so we pray that maybe God takes care of them. We are with them, we'll be praying for them. And so dear viewers, as I said, without waste of time, we'll be going to the first topic, which talks about the death of uh, Samuel Wazizi, who was uh, a worker in the house with CMTV here. And so we are going to discuss, you know, two days ago, he was supposed to celebrate his uh, birthday, you know, he was born on the 6th of June, 1984. And uh, he was supposed to be about 36 years. Um, that is uh, on Friday. But unfortunately, uh, his birthday met him maybe dead. So we are going to look at it. Tomorrow, the 9th of June, is supposed to be the last session of his court uh, proceedings. Is it going to be a justice in the court of justice or injustice in the court of justice. There are so many people who are waiting for that. Okay, I want to come with you, Mr. Njomo Siri. Tomorrow, 9th of uh, June, he was supposed to appear before the law court, even though he has not been appearing, they have not been bringing him. But this time, maybe he will be coming in a corpse. Um, Mr. Williams, it's important that we revisit uh, the personality of the deceased. Some people might be meeting the news for the first time, and so we are talking about um, a 36 years old uh, TV broadcaster. He was broadcasting live here in a pidgin language, and uh, since uh, August 2nd, 2019, he was kidnapped by the Yaoundé administration here, represented by their uh, policemen in the Munya constituency. Uh, kept under detention for three to four days and uh, later uh, transferred to the 21st Battalion, uh, which is a no-go area. Uh, since then, neither the family nor the Defense Council have had information from him until Equinox some uh, one week ago had to um, break the news that uh, Samuel Wazizi is no more. And it was a news that was first uh, handpicked as uh, pinches of salt uh, until the government was taken apart to make a public declaration. The communication boss at the Ministry of Defense has to come out and uh, 
give, uh, I mean, release some information confirming the, uh, the, the, the accession of Equinox, that is Samuel Wazizi died on the 19th of August 2019. 17, 17. On the 17th of August 2019, thanks for that correction. That is some 10 months ago. And so, for the concession that you are asking us to, to debate on today, it is important to revisit three era okay. of uh, Wazizi's life. The first moment that we need to revisit and very urgent are uh, the prevailing situation, are uh, the prevailing condition within which he was arrested. What was the was it done under the ampit of the law? It's important that we tell our viewers what transpired within that period. Secondly, the moment that uh, Wazizi was uh, uh, disappeared, I mean, when nobody knew about the whereabouts of Wazizi, it is important that we question the role of the judiciary within that period of time, which has been evaluated by some pundits to some close to 300 days. It's quite a long time. And finally, we shall now end by talking about the, 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 the last court session. What, is, what should we be expecting from the court? Starting from the first one, I think the, the criminal procedure court which is uh, the legal document it came up in 2005 and published in 2006 and in that quote i want to visit book one and two because in book one it talks about the condition under which somebody can be arrested and book two talks about the condition under which somebody can be detained talking about book one article 30 it focus on how do you summon somebody or how do you, who issues the, the warrant of arrest? Now, in this case, according to a land counsel uh, by Sayewule Edward, he explained lastly in our show here that uh, uh, late Wazizi Samuel was uh, summoned through the phone. Okay? The law does not make provision for that. And so he appeared and nobody has pro uh, provided so far any process verbal where he was interrogated and given the opportunity to Explain. and given the opportunity to be assisted by okay. a, a legal counsel the law make provision for that on uh, we are talking about section 30 sub d that's sub 4 yes the law make provision that the the suspect is supposed to be given the opportunity to call the assistance of his lawyer. That was not done. We are talking about the force that has been dictated in all the process. Then after that, under detention, I take you now to book two, where they say the suspect under detention supposed to be given access to medical care or the, the, the licit basic facilities. There's medical care, a phone call from the family, and, and so many other things. Reports from the late, from, from the legal counsel of Samuel Wazizi still tell us that he was not given an opportunity to be treated according to the criminal procedure law. So, from the judiciary background, we have evidence to say that the court has failed from the two preceding era. Now. The opportunity is given to them tomorrow, as you rightly put it, the 9th of June, to first revisit what has been done previously, yeah. all the lapses that are observed, and try to amend. That is in the one hand. In the second hand now, the, the communication boss in the Ministry of Defense uh, uh, produced a communique that has a lot of uh, misinformation. The first, they, they, they tell the press that Samuel Wazizi was arrested on the third, it is a lie, it was on the second of August 2019. That is one. Two, he was transferred to Yaoundé. Uh, he had an illness. Up to now, the family was uh, interrogated some few days ago, and according to the medical cards, the medical book of Samuel Wazizi, there is no proof to show that Samuel Wazizi had once suffered from this kind of illness. Yes, there is no proof so far. 
Secondly, the family refuted any allegation of being in close collaboration with the administration or even the judicial court. So from those perspectives, it is the first assignment that in tomorrow's hearing, the first thing that the magistrate is supposed to ask to the accuser to is is to make provision for all these lapses that the government has has created to prove to bring the evidence the possible when he was arrested the condition under which he was detained the medical book that showed that he has a septic and last but not the least to, to, we expect that they should bring the cops yeah because when the herbia when the herbia corpus was uh, uh, uh first filed in court it was an opportunity for the judicial system for the court to to make available the suspect but they failed to do that it means that tomorrow is the last opportunity they have in their hand to produce the suspect now that it is known by everybody that the suspect is dead they must produce the corpse of the suspect to prove that actually the communique that was produced by the minister of defense actually correspond with refact if not we will say that we have a mushroom uh, judiciary system that has that is just having a shadow of itself and so we will question our magistrates we will question every authority of the judiciary system i think in the nutshell that is my first apprehension of what i expect from the from the judicial from the court session of tomorrow okay um i'll come back to you uh, dr busi ernest you are a psychologist and uh, before adding to what you also have to say what do you think because i really want us to look at because he's already dead i want us to look at some other things what do you think has to be done as at now that a family is going going through torture psychological torture the 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 communication of family is going through psychological torture cmtv is going through psychological torture so many people are affected by this uh, yes uh, i feel that uh, the family is in psychosocial pain at this moment a pain that because their son was a buoyant son a son with prospects and he just died like that because the issue of his arrestation was an arbitrary arrest and uh, the government started talking of uh, the 2014 terrorism law and he was not even judged in court and uh, he was still suspect but looking at it psychologically as you rightly asked mr mwambo williams i feel that uh, the government we need honesty here because I feel that if we are able to be honest to tell the family what happened from day one to day, to, to day 100 even or day 300, what happened to this gentleman, I think that the bridge to solve this problem first of all is, is honesty. Secondly, we need a kind of therapies to this family. And what are these therapies? Because at this moment, the family is grieving. Because when you look at some psychologists, Kobler Rose will say that what? In the dying process, people bargain dead. People pass through depression. Before they even accept that, they pass through a lot of depression. And now the family is grieving. There's bereavement. And they are still struggling to accept the demise of their son. So in this process, they need comfort, and government needs to comfort the family, and no, government government needs to come out and use soft reprimands, so use soft words of communication, and even send representative from Yaounde or the Ye in Boya to comfort the family. This is a time of government need to put down the high horse and mediate and come directly and communicate with this family and comfort with them because at this time of traumatization uh, words of condolences from the government and words of hope to the family can relieve the stress and the pain of his child 
and the family so at this point in time grieving especially in africa and in cameroon is a painful situation because the way of mourning we mourn as a family we mourn as a whole so government needs to come in and also be part of this mourning be because if we put it as a blame game the psychosocial torture will remain in the mind of the family because it is a ma an issue of the psychic because the mind is a great weapon that hardly forgets so for these people to forget and continue with life they, they need comfort they need words of comfort from the government mr williams yes um i want to stay with you yes. because in most cases maybe you see some money made available and so on do you see maybe job opportunities for those in the family who are not employed and maybe ah, it is difficult it is difficult it is really difficult to have for that to happen but i feel that it, it can be done but it's difficult in this country because can we it help to no, solve this it can, no it's not only money yes. it's not only money that can solve this problem the problem is first of all the family have not seen their their son okay, okay. so i feel that i'm talking from a psychological perspective i'm not talking from an economic perspective of money okay. the family needs to see their son because in africa we have the rites of passage you have in we have in in, in uh, when somebody dies in an african way there's a rite of passage that we must ensure that the person pass into the spiritual to the ancestral selfhood and for this person to pass there are certain there are certain african rituals that must be performed for us accept that this person is dead when i say african rituals it can be in church and it can be in an african way so when we accept that and we 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 finally uh, buried our son then we know that he passed away but if the family doesn't see the son the pain the psychic of the family will never be balanced they will be in a, a state of psychodesonance, a state of mismatch in their in their mind system, a state a state of nervousness, a state of anxiety, a state of stress, and even a state of post-traumatic stress disorder. So at this point in time, we need government to come out honestly to tell us what happened to this gentleman, and to come out and comfort and give hope to the family. If they can help some of the children with scholarship, then fine. But I think that this is a gap that cannot be replaced. When somebody dies, the person cannot come. So we should respect human rights because life is very important. Life is sacrosanct. And I feel that the judiciary should do their work. And I feel that it is, was the responsibility of the judicial police to do its work because I still feel that in Cameroon today, we need separation of power. And if there was accurate separation of power, the justice house would have been doing their job without the military being involved okay now that is the family side but some people say you know the journalists are bereaved they are feeling bad is it not high time the government to say no more arrestation of journalists they should give them freedom of speech but unfortunately getting to today we are hearing that one more journalist has been taken yes. Uh, journalists are in a great dilemma in this country because journalism and journalists fall under the fourth arm of government and I feel that government have to respect this call because it's an independ independent call. Government cannot do without journalists okay. and I feel that uh, the arrestation of journalists will not solve the problems of Cameroon. We need to be genuine about this. The arrestation will cause more conflict but I think that for the case of Samuel Wazizi most of these journalists would have come out massively earlier enough most of these journalists were supposed the way they are advocating on social media from the beginning this they were supposed to be supposed to be uh, to have been advocating before for their brother to come out i think that there was a delay tactics on the side of journalists and journalists in cameroon they need to be bold they need to be bold they need to be brave because it was a, their responsibility to keep on talking about this issue, not after his demise. But I still feel that the government has to res respect the call of journalism because it is a call that stands for the right of the people. Okay. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Anjomo Siri. As he said, Dr. Busi Ene said, can it be possible that the journalists in Cameroon can be as brave 
as we see somewhere else, when we see that maybe during uh, elections and other events, the military carry their around, politicians carry their around, they are afraid, so close to these people. Because some people are of the opinion that how can a, a, a journalist do the right thing when a politician will come pay him or her and carry him around to, 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 to cover an event? Or maybe at one time during elections or uh, other events, the military carry them around and maybe assess what they are doing. Your question, Mwambo Williams, you you have some iota of answer already. Okay. I will quote two values that I hold so dear to answer you. The first one says, economic justice can best be won by free men through free enterprises. And the second one says, Earth's greatest treasure lies in human personality. Uh, it's rather unfortunate that most journalists have sold what they have as pride. Is when, when I look around and see, be it big journalists, I mean senior journalists as uh, debuters or beginners, the way they behave on the field, you hardly see a difference. Behind a, a green sheet of 5,000 francs, the way they panic. <laughs> you ask yourself, do they know that they have gone to school for close to 15 years for some? Why can they know you the skill, the communication skill they have to generate money? Why would they submit themselves to the weak strengths of, of, of gumbo? And so, permit me to say, dear friend, dear Mwambo Williams, that you cannot buy the finger that fits your mouth. You cannot. It's not a particularity of Cameroon alone. But in some other country, the debate has advanced. We are still at the level of survival in Cameroon. I'm telling you, I've shamelessly participated in some conferences with journalists. You know I'm, I'm, I'm a part-time TV presenter. And so occasionally I've been invited to take part in anything that has to do with uh, expressions. I see the way they behave. I ask myself that, how can you expect this kind of people to be transparent? So I, when I see most of them advocating, for Samuel Wazizi's case, I ask myself, this is a case that has lasted for 300 days. If you sum up, because one way to show that you are serious with a cause yes. is the level of consistency. If you sum up from day one to day 300, you pick each and every one and put in front of his responsibilities and say, how many times did you commented on this case knowing that Wazizi was missing. Very few will boast of 10 days consistency. And so I cannot stand their pretense when they stand and they are making all those their rubbish in front of TV because the next case, they will still behave the same. They are the one encouraging this, this dictatorial regime. They are the one. I have seen them running behind CPD and politicians. The very people, very soon we shall talk about the special status in the Anglophone region. What has changed? What has changed for God's sake? And it is the journalists that are perpetrating this. I know after this they will attack me personally on streets. They will attack me wherever. But I'm not afraid. I have to speak the truth. The history of America tells us that most of the frontline advocates were betrayed. It's not unfortunate that in our own era, there are two groups of people who are delaying our freedom, our liberation. In the one hand, you have journalists. And in the second hand, you have civil society actors. The fact that they, they receive free aid, free money, make, make them to, to, to slip over their, their brain. And they spend their time sabotaging entrepreneurs 
sabotaging those who genuinely create wealth in the society. And that is where we find ourselves. Politicians will use them so often for their personal gain. And hardly would they be able to draw a, a margin of differences between saving the community and pushing the cause of a politician. So, in the nutshell, about Wazizi's case, journalists, they will see cash many and more journalists because they, I always want to point out, Samuel Wazizi's, the moment he was, he was singled out, it's important to always remind. He, CMTV was down for some time. It's always important. And so he was not taken out of the mic. It's, and that's why I tell you that you should be very careful what journalists are doing out there. If he was that, he was somebody that he presented a, a program like we are presenting this one, and after this program he was picked up. Yes, journalists will be shouting all what they are shouting, and I can stand with them. But knowing that this is somebody who did, who was picked in an, in, in, when CMTV, the broadcasting house, was not on, I think we should be able to face the fact and ask ourselves, why are journalists so wired up? They have another motive. Okay. Uh, let, let me come in. Yes, before. Let me, yes. Let me come in. I, I want to add by saying that uh, there are some good journalists too. We know of journalists who have uh, expressed themselves on serious issues concerning the anglophone problem in war-torn areas, in Mo Moyoka, in Ekona, in Bamenda, and their life was threatened. And some of them left this country. Some of them went to prison. We will not call names here, but we know them. Some of them went to prison, some of them left the country. So I feel that it's an issue of human rights. We must respect human rights in Cameroon. The Human Rights Laws 1948, there are certain principles that the right of people must be respected. We know of when the Anglophone crisis started, teachers and lawyers were radicalized. These are gentlemen. These are gen teachers are gentlemen. Lawyers are gentlemen. They were radicalized. Some of their wings were taken off their heads. They, they were brutalized even in Boya, we know, before this crisis is what it is today. So we are crying to our government, the government of the Republic of Cameroon, that we need justice in this country. We need to respect human rights. Many children are vulnerable today because of this issue of not respecting human rights. And many persons are displaced today and they are suffering. Many homes have been burned today. Many people are living in the bushes because we are not respecting human rights. The, the military must be sensitive. And the military should allow the police to do their job. The police to allow, should allow the military to do their job. And the military should do their job in a more civilian way. Because Camer in Cameroon, we are not fighting a war with Nigeria. We are not fighting a war with the Gambians. We are not fighting a war with Equatorial Guinea. Our own brothers and sisters, our own blood, whether in uniforms, militaries, the military people are dying, the civilians are dying, mothers are dying, young children are dying, parents are dying, the youth are dying. So it is high time President Bia looks for a solution to solve this problem. And I think that the problem of one Samuel Wazizi, it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. So we must be very, very prudent and sensitive and put justice first and let the law court do its job. People are not judged. I think that the, we're looking at the Anglo-Saxon cu culture, looking at the English culture. Yeah. You judge someone in the court before you see the person guilty. You cannot say somebody is guilty, somebody is a terrorist when the person haven't been judged in, and sentenced in court. So we should not take the laws in our hands. No Cameroonian is important than another Cameroonian. Every Cameroonian is equal. We talk of equity. Every Cameroonian is equal, whether young, whether old. And I think that when you look at nation building, everybody is engaged in nation building, whether the young, the old, the, the youths, and everybody. So I think that the problem of Cameroon, the problem of governance in this country should be addressed 
then we can we can start talking somewhere to solve the, our problems. Okay, uh, Mr. Anjo Mosiri, you talked of you know uh, some journalists, as you said, not all, yeah. who are promoting problems, especially what we have in Cameroon today. Now we have three sets of people, as some people say, we have the private sector journalists, we have the state journalists, and we have the administration. Now we have the tendency or the, we have a situation whereby mostly it is the private sector journalists who face a lot of problems. While some people think that these problems, you know, uh, it is administration and the, maybe the state uh, media who always say things and move people to anger. What's your take on that? Listen, Mambo Williams, I still want to insist that Today's discussion is not much of journalists' case per se. Yes. Once I've said that, bad journalists cut across the private sector, the parastatal, yes. the government. It takes one person to understand that I can sleep for it. It's normal for me to sleep a day without eating. Tomorrow, I might have food. It's not every day that you must eat. People should, first of all, put that in their heads. Once you cannot sacrifice a day without eating, you want by all means to satisfy your greed at the detriment of others. That is what I'm decrying here. Because those people will go extent just to have that 5,000 or have that small money they are looking for in the name of advocacy. That kind of yellow advocacy, we want to see an end to it. Mambo Williams. Yes. The Anglophone crisis is a very critical issue. We have had journalists refuting some of us that are also using the mic. Mm -hmm. if, Ms. if Mr. Wazizi was still living, there are certain mil milieu that he will be restrained to enter because there was a question in the school where he went to be broadcasting on air. I personally have had that challenge. But if I die today, those same people will be pretending outside there that I was a journalist. I'm making more noise. I want to distinguish, <laughs> I want to distance myself from that kind of attitude. We are young people, we are rising, and the leadership of tomorrow is in our hands. We start preparing it today. Mambo Williams, when we speak, we should speak for us and speak for the future generation. Let's 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 let let's, let's shine all those people who are using this case of this sorrowful case of was easy where our focus and attention should be is at the level of the human rights that is where the bulk of the work is because there is total violation of human rights from day one to the end as for freedom of expression that is another ball game and so i'm very careful and selective when i want to make a comment there. okay let maybe let while let we are going to the end I want to say that uh, there are some uh, TV houses in the country where some journalists also proclaim hate speeches. We know of that. We know of journalists in the francophone areas that, that call anglophones names. Hate speech. So I feel that this issue of hate speech is common about, among journalists. And these are things we know of what happened in the, the Hitu and the Hutsis. That led to a genocide. It led to a genocide which count in Uganda because of uh, because of hate speech. And I feel that journalists must respect their words. They should understand what comes out from their mouth. And many at times too, you see that uh, I think that uh, the state media also have to be very independent and just when passing information. And I want to end. Do you know that recently Equinox TV was, ac was attacked because they were advocating for the truth? So, at, so what I, I'm still saying is that we, we should live in a country that allows freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and put justice first. Because when we put power, we put draconian measures, we put harsh measures first, we are not going to solve the Cameroonian problems. We can only solve the Cameroonian problems when we respect the law and we put the justice system firm.
Okay, while we are taking a bend to this topic, uh, Mr. Njomo uh if I want to put now to be somehow prophetic now, tomorrow, the 9th of June, we expect the court session for Wazizi. Now, what do you foresee to happen that tomorrow? That the irresponsible government will not produce the cops. If we are not careful, they will adjoin. And they are joined for a dead man. Yes, they, they, they don't care. I'm talking about a government that have no remorse. People are not responsible. Nobody cares. Don't you see the and, judge penalizing and, and, some of those officials and, and, who surround? And they, they, what, what, what makes me smile out of all this is to see the pretense of, of, the, the, of, of those who surround the whole game. It's like a play. See, he has taken $20 for America to be almost burned down with the case of George Floyd. Are you getting me? To tell you that in a county where people are hungry for change, you don't beg for justice. You go for it. <laughs> we saw a two-time self president of the republic, President Barack Obama on the streets with family, yes. leading a protest. It takes mindset. What should somebody who have served for two years, for two terms, that is eight years in a role, be doing on the streets? Is it lacking what to eat? Man, I'm telling you that it's taking, it's, it's something beyond looking for what to eat. And that is what I'm calling young people to do. Stop populism. It's not taking you anywhere. Very soon we shall talk about the special statue. We are in a deep shit. And that for a long time if we are not careful. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Busi Enes, do you, what do you prophesy of tomorrow's judgment? Uh, tomorrow's judgment, I wouldn't like us to call the government irresponsible but i want to say that the government needs to sit up the government needs to sit up but tomorrow i don't see anything that i don't, I don't see anything good that will come out from the court because the government already had their own impression their own perception about uh samuel wazizi the government already said he's a terrorist he's a logis logistician with the separatists what do you think the government will say so uh, for now uh, taking discussing a dead person's case in court won't even change anything i don't see i don't see any justice in this country for, for the case tomorrow but uh, what i'm saying is that uh, the judge should know that the scale as the scale is like this at times it can go like that and go left right let him learn to balance the scale and i think that only justice because justice can bring peace in the minds of the family and I want to say that your conscience, Mr. Josh, you went to Enam to, to, to learn law. And don't try to be just, litigate with justice. Because we will see leg yeah, because legacy will follow you when you do the right thing. But when you follow your emotions, when you follow the superior power from above, then we know that injustice makes people to frown and the family will keep on frowning and the pain will continue but i don't see anything good coming out from the court tomorrow dear viewers before i read a few messages here just to say that the whole world will be waiting for the justice to maybe take a crucial decision tomorrow the 9th of june and that is what will maybe determine the level of justice in Cameroon. Is it going to be justice in the court of justice or injustice in the court of justice? The whole world will be waiting to hear that. I believe the justice is watching. Now, let me take this. It says, hi to you all in this panel. I am Marie from Moliko. Please, I wish to ask if there, there is freedom of press in Cameroon. If yes, please, why did they kill Samuel Wazizi? Why did they kill Samuel Wazizi? This one says, good evening, it's Johnson from Moya. I wish to know when is the funeral program of Samuel Wazizi, a.k.a. Hala Yamata. Thanks, may his soul keep resting in 
this. Those are maybe we'll be taking more messages as we go on, given that we don't have time. Just these are some of the people who are watching. Dear viewers, we'll still have more editions to talk about Samuel Wazizi. Maybe after the uh, court session of tomorrow, next week, or next edition on Wednesday and Friday, we, we are still going to talk on that. We shall be going on the second topic, the second topic whereby we are going to talk on something which is very, very striking. We will not want you to leave your seats. We will not want you to leave an inch, but maybe sit with us and really partake in this uh, program, just as we are doing, we are going to talk of the special status that was given Northwest and Southwest regions by the government of Cameroon. How is the process? It is, it, is it just a kind of political slogan that is fake, or is it that the machinery grinds slowly and surely when we come back? Okay.